As some of you may have heard, NASA received a, a signal many years ago, late 1990s, and it was from the Andromeda Galaxy. About 80,000 years ago it was sent. Now, it, it hasn't really been discussed with NASA since, but Dr. Kulikov, a Russian scientist, um, says that he had deciphered the signal. And whether or not you choose to believe that this is a real story or not, because I know that with so much of the cover-up going on, you may get people saying that this is credibly or in discredibly. <coughs> if you take it for a genuine story for a moment, you have to think back to what Carl Sagan said that many civilizations, according to Drake's equation, may not survive technological adolescence and destroy themselves. The message is believed to have been translated to read, help us. And there was a great deal of guilt expressed in the message, although we don't have the message. The sender of the message indicates that their civilization had been annihilated and they did it to themselves. It makes you stop and pause to think for a minute that the scientists on Earth are, are getting it right. It's an eerie sort of subtle feeling that comes over you when you hear something like this. They were right. Carl was right. Many civilizations probably have blown themselves up by now through adolescence and inability to overcome their divisional thinking and egos, <laughs> which stems from this belief that it's all about me. Everyone has this belief that it's all about me. You're human, you're born on this planet, and you have right, some kind of right to something. And so everything is all about you. It's always about you. And everything revolves around you. Everything revolves around your, your world. You are the center, and everything revolves around you. It is incredibly difficult for a brain with a species and intelligence to see past their eyes and ears and their perception, because we're covered in sensory senses all around us. And so we're always feeling within ourselves at the center. So we don't really feel what others feel. A very sweet and loving and deeply compassionate girl came to me long ago. Though she was not a human being, it didn't really matter. She had all the attributes of any ordinary human being. In fact, even spoke as an ordinary girl would sound, if you can take anybody ordinarily and put out there. It has been my claim these last five years that I met a being that many would call a hybrid, an extraterrestrial, whatever you want to call her by name. They don't use names. This is important because they're a telepathic civilization. She gave me a name to call her by, though it can be found here on Earth as well as their civilization's name can be traced and found here on Earth. Sasani, Ashikani. <coughs> Often people know of Bashar. Or they hear of uh, Daryl Anka, who can claims he psychically channels a being called Bashar, who's from the same race, in fact, that this being came to me is from, her name being Benico. And it calls to mind a chilling reminder of what Benico had warned me about about this civilization and the human race. And we, were, we did get into a discussion about Star Trek, and it was interesting that they know of our television and in fact like Star Trek, but indicated to me that it cannot be that way in real life. And I said, why? She had told me, the human race is not telepathic yet. <coughs> you do not empathize or feel each other and talk to each other the way that we talk to each other telepathically. And she said that you have to evolve this. 
in order to get into the galaxy, in order to save your own civilization from destruction, in order to get out of the it's all about me thinking as she was telling me, you have to literally get into someone else's head and they have to go be allowed to get into yours. Now that's something most people wouldn't allow to happen. Most people are very guarded and simply won't allow anyone in, especially victims of crime and sexual abuse and torture, become very compartmentalized in their thinking. And in fact, many who wish to control others use this method of drama, assault, and battery on this planet so often for their own purposes, to suit their own egotistic gain, perhaps to protect an agency's interest and image, a government's image. People are then murdered, subjected to torture, psychological, and this causes these people to become very fractured in their minds. But imagine if those who tortured them and raped them could feel every single experience this person was feeling when they were raping them. They wouldn't rape them anymore. In fact, they would change forever. <coughs> this is what might have happened to this civilization in the Andromeda Galaxy. What the scientists aren't talking about is the need for telepathy, a need to have this extra sense that we don't yet possess as a civilization. And Benico pointed out very succinctly, it cannot be like Star Trek. I'm sorry, she said, it just can't be that way. With this civilization, the way it currently is, and your current evolution and biology of your frame of mind, and your inability to communicate with each other, you cannot go to the stars. Even if you had starships, it wouldn't work out. Much of what is out there, as she told me, is telepathic and communicates at a level of thinking which is universal. Now, many spiritualists and psychologists and people try to preach this. Dr. Dwayne Dyer talks about it in The Power of Intention so often, and I've read his book, Back, Back to Front. You have to overcome this and feel everything around you. But a lot of it is very self-centered, Dr. Dyer. It does, you do tend to get kind of a bit of, Dr. Dyer, you get a little self-centered <coughs> on the self too much. But again, that's to be expected from a non-telepathic civilization. Many religions are the same way. The personification of God is a human being with a beard, with a white beard. Um... <coughs> that everything is the center of the universe right here on earth and everything centers around the human race and being human that's not going to work on starships going into the galaxy but then most of these people that preach these things online aren't talking about building starships and exploring the galaxy either they're too busy dealing with dealing with themselves and their circle, and who's around them. But let's end this video on a happy, heartfelt note. To you out there who sent the message, I understand you. And if I could, I would help you. There is... That's really the question that this message is putting forth to the human race. Not that to say, hey, well, here we are, here's our planet location, and the fact that we destroyed ourselves. But it seems to be posing an interesting question and a conundrum to the human race, who receives this message and deciphers it. The simple question is put to you. Would you, if you had the means to do so, take off in a starship, throw a wormhole, in the instant you received it, and it could somehow travel back 80,000 years in time and across 2 million light years to the Andromeda Galaxy, find that planet's exact location as they gave it, and help them? Or would you simply use this advanced technology just to go explore rocks and moons to help pay off the $60 trillion American deficit? Or perhaps they're simply just too alien for you too bizarre, frightening, what scares you about this message the most? Are they too much like yourselves? <laughs>